The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Hi, I'm Joe Nye, the Science Guy, not to be confused with my great grandfather Bill. Now, when I say the word quantum, two things should come to mind. First, it's a great way to add 20% to the, to the asking price of anything. Second, you should probably think about quantum computing. Now, quantum computing has been five years away for the last 20 years, but trust me, a quantum computer is around five years away. There are many companies, including IBM, and some local companies who have successfully deployed quantum solutions into the market and are changing the way that people do things. Let's find out a little bit about them. But before we can understand how quantum computing is going to change the world, we should probably understand what it's all about. Come, I'll show you. Classical computers operate on bits. These are ones and zeros, which represent charge inside the memory of a processor. Something can be a zero or a one, but it can't be both. So, for example, if we called A zero and B one, we could have A's and B's inside the processor, but nothing else. These A's and B's could be combined to represent other things, but we'd be limited to, the, to, the, to these two bases. This works perfectly for almost everything that we want to do today such as phones, laptops, but it becomes prohibitive when we want to solve more complex problems that require a lot of computing power. Companies like IBM have invested millions and millions of dollars into developing a quantum computer because of the massive processing power that it has. Quantum computers are based on qubits and not bits. Qubits offer more storage capacity inside a device because it measures the angular momentum of a particle. The angu angular momentum is not limited to a 1 or a 0, but has an extra parameter and potentially more extra parameters to measure, which means that we can operate outside the range of 1 and 0. The angular momentum of a particle is just basically the spin of the particle. If we look at this sphere, the spin could be going up or it could be going down, but it could be in any other direction. Using this, we create more me uh, memory capacity. So, for example, with those three parameters that I mentioned, we could call A 0, 0, 0, B 0, 0, 1, and continue on and get seven different combinations uh, of, uh, of memory to assign to a value, rather than two using classical computing. This is how quantum mechanics achieves superior processing. I know this sounds complicated, but there's actually ways we can see the properties of quantum computing in everyday life with some polarized glasses and a laptop. So polarized glasses sort photons in a certain way. They actually sort them by their polarization. So if we look at this white screen and these glasses, you can see everything, uh, everything is, uh, as it should. But as we start to rotate them, less and less light is making it through. Light of the wrong pol polarization is being sorted out. So we can see that we can, we can visualize this as this being the zero in the quantum computer and this being the one, and everything in between is a superposition. That's basically how a quantum computer is working. So why should we care about quantum computing? Well, there's multiple benefits and scientists are looking to add more every single day. These benefits could include things like optimization speed and security. Here's one way that quantum computing is going to change how things are done. Quantum computers have the potential to do much better at solving optimization problems than traditional problems than traditional computers, because the qubit can encode information as both a one and a zero at the same time. This quantum phenomenon is known as superposition. Imagine a traveler trying to find the lowest position of an area. Instead of starting at one point and traveling downhill, if the traveler starts at many points and travels downhill simultaneously, they will find the global minimum faster. This is similar to how a quantum computer solves a complex optimization problem more quickly. Hi, I'm Sean Shippelot, 
I manage the supply chain for a global shipping company. One of my jobs is to optimize the routes of our trucks to keep costs down, make sure packages get delivered on time, and handle unexpected events like a truck breaking down. Optimizing our supply chain routes to do all this would be impractical with traditional computing. We have hundreds of millions of locations we ship to, and we ship tens of millions of packages every day. Finding an optimized route for all our drivers could take weeks using traditional computing, but business changes faster than that. Quantum computing allows us to solve an optimization problem for all these routes in a matter of minutes. This is a fast enough speed to use in our day-to-day -day operations. It means we can find efficient delivery routes for all our drivers all the time. Hi, I'm Bill Cash, a portfolio manager at the private fund. So financial service is all about managing risk and increasing return. But with hundreds and thousands of stocks in your portfolio and so many variables and options, it's actually very difficult for a traditional computer to calculate all the possibilities. For example, in financial service, uh, imagine you manage thousands of stocks with so many variables and constraints it's very difficult for a traditional computer to uh, collect all the data and compute all the data. So it would take months, if not years, uh, to collect all the data you want. So very often people make decisions based on the best information they have available to them. And with quantum computing, because it can process millions and billions of data um, parallelly, it gives us the opportunity to see all the data and all the calculation uh, at the same time. And this gives us the opportunity to make the best uh, decision in real time and increase our return and decrease our risk. One industry that cares a lot about the direction of quantum computing is cybersecurity. Let's talk to an expert about how quantum computing is going to help him. Perfect shot. Hey, I'm Ken Safeguard. I'm the Chief Security Officer of a healthcare organization. As a usual part of our daily business activities, we exchange a lot of information with external parties, including personal identifications of the patients, as well as their financial data, such as their banking account information. So my job is to make sure that the communication of this data are conducted safely and securely. So here it is how it works. First, uh, for every piece of information we send out, uh, we will encrypt it. And then a key will be created and shared with the recipient. And the key is typically made up of a series of random numbers. And then the encrypted message will be sent to the recipient through a public network, while the key will uh, be shared through a more private and more protected manner. However, Sometimes hackers may still be able to intrude our system and steal the key without anyone noticing it. That will lead to data breach, which will eventually cause financial losses. Such events have been seen more frequently in the recent years, and we're facing challenges that are bigger than ever. With the help of quantum computing, the situation might be a lot better. One major technological breakthrough brought by quantum computing is quantum key distribution. It leverages certain properties of quantum physics to facilitate a higher level of security. It relies on the fact that observations or measurements of a quantum state introduce perturbations in that state. When an intruder unauthentically picks at the key, it essentially changes the state of the qubits, hence the value of the information being transmitted. So the stolen key will effectively become different from the original. Additionally, perturbations during the transmission process will be detectable to the receiver. So any attack attempt will be immediately found out and reported. Wow, that was really interesting. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Joe Nye the Science Guy. Make sure to come back next week when we talk about sponges. Did you know they're kind of alive? <laughs>